It's just after dawn and Interfet is launching its mission to secure Suai. Australian Blackhawks fly across East Timor to the territory's southwestern edge with the first of 150 New Zealand troops. Australian troops will follow in a campaign to end five weeks of terror in East Timor's last militia stronghold. Obviously security is a problem and the threat in this area at the moment is uh, a little bit more unknown because we're, we're pushing in, into an area that is close to the border as you've said and we're concerned for security of everybody that's here and that's something that will be clearly focused in all of our operations. Get into a bus system, get over here, so you're covering down that way, let's go. Watch out. And there's still more coming. The first large foreign contingent to reach Suai seems more intimidated by the few locals who've dared to come home than the locals are of this new army in town. Typical of the East Timorese, this group is happy UN sanctioned forces made it at all. If possible, once they've had a good look, can you ask them to move, carry on with their business? Not even a hint of anger that the world left them at the beginning of last month to the mercy of a spiteful, brutal and unusually destructive military operation. It's the last major East Timor road yet to be abandoned by the armed gangs. For this trip south from Dili through the mountainous centre, I joined Australian aid workers and a doctor too impatient to wait for an all clear from the multinational forces. Along the way, village after village utterly destroyed. An activist for East Timorese self-determination, Andrew McNaughton has no doubt who shoulders the blame for the destruction here. That coordination can't have come from anywhere but from an army, from the Indonesian army, and it can't have occurred without being endorsed and sanctioned from the top level of the Indonesian Armed Forces. This cannot be a lower level operation. <laughs> when foreign correspondent last visited Suai, just before August's overwhelming vote for independence, 1,800 refugees had fled to the church seeking protection from the militia's campaign of terror. The leader of East Timor's militias told us there would be violence after the vote. Akan terjadi. Akan terjadi tambah jiwa timur ni ni nunggu aku ikalah. And in the midst of a defiant pro-independence rally in a militia heartland, an independence leader said the local militia had already told him the refugees were going to die. You will see uh, on the first and. 2nd of September. It means that they will attack for the people, especially uh, the refugees that right now are living in the residence of, of uh, Suai Sart. The yard where they cheered and yelled that day is now in a wasteland. Of all the accounts of brutality to emerge from recent weeks in East Timor, the most chilling has come from here. Reports that 100 of those we'd met in the churchyard in August had been slaughtered. In Suai, some believe the toll was even higher. As we went back to Suai's church and half-built cathedral, so too did a witness to the events of early September. Jose Manuel da Silva was one refugee among hundreds, watching as militiamen pointed a gun at the respected local priest, Father Hilario. 
Ngereng kita kita tanis marah tempu ita mati na ita rezarik. Still at the place where he died, what appeared to be Father Hilario's glasses. Jose ran out the back of the church. He says he saw between 30 and 40 bodies before he hid to escape death himself. On the other side of the compound, around the imposing half-built cathedral, there are signs of killings Jose didn't see. There's blood everywhere, there's blood on walls, there's blood on um, uh, bamboo scaffolding, there's blood on... In many cases um, here, it appears the killers didn't bother with things. bullets. Bullets weren't used to shoot people because they're probably expensive, so they've just literally herded these people up three flights of stairs until there's no further to go, and they've either thrown them over, or, they've, um, or the people have chosen to jump over, uh, which is about a 50 feet fall, and to their death. So who were the Black September killers in Suai? Jose saw the militia that day, but he has no doubt who was giving the orders, the local Indonesian military commander. Indonesia, Ami Asa Ami, Dian Ami Hutu Hilimak Autonomy, Lai Ohohotu. It's a claim made right across East Timor that Indonesia's military is the real villain. On the road to Suai, the town of Ainaro, like almost every other centre, has been destroyed. Nelson Valante Pires was a senior member of the local Mahidi militia. He says he only joined to protect his family and village. Primeiro nene sunu uma neve ma acontece ia dia quatro nene husi milícia sira maka sunu mai be TNI ia kut kutu quando la sunu sira rasik mak sunu enquanto sira setau milícia TNI ajuda sunu. The militia destroyed Nelson's home. He lived, perhaps only because he fled. Others tried to run, but were shot. This trek into the bush an hour northeast of Suai to evacuate a man gunned down three weeks ago. So he's got a bullet penetration wound, three, three weeks old, going straight through his upper arm, through his humerus, and it's shattered that. So that's, uh, that'll need surgery. It might need amputation. Now his leg, yeah. poor man. We've seen chronically malnourished people with, uh, with four weeks of uh, post the militia uprising and the, or the militia killings and uh, terrified people. Most of their injuries at the moment seem to be psychological. We know that there are a number of uh, deaths um, and a number of bullet uh, penetration injuries, but their overall health at the moment is uh, probably better than we'd dare hope for. As tens of thousands begin the trek back from hiding in the bush to their destroyed villages, word is emerging of many others who waited weeks with serious injuries. On the Suai Road in the village of Ainaro, doctors treat six shot more than two weeks ago. They lived because a young East Timorese doctor raided the medicine cupboard before he fled. L listen to me, can the, can the helicopter come to Kassa? In this part of East Timor, even those who escaped the bullets and machetes are in danger. It's these remote people who've been in the hills for longer, they've been further away from health care and further away from, uh, from food supplies for much longer, so we've got to get in right now. It's why some aid workers wouldn't wait for the military. Now the helicopters and armoured vehicles are in Suai. Too late to save most of the buildings and many of the people, though in East Timor they're thankful anyway. There's reason now to think the terror of Black September is finally over. <laughs>